Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Esther here. Um, I just want to start off by wishing each and every single one of you a blessed and happy new year. By God's grace, we are all around to see 2023. Um, and I know very much so within the context of our culture, a new year often comes with um, new year's resolution, as they are said, vows, promises, plans for some and for others. A new year is really nothing more than the very next day. Um, but if there's one thing that I believe all of us should be doing, whether it's a new year or it's the very next day, is that we should time to time um, really take note or review how we are living for Christ. Um, as we are on the dawn even of a new month and a new day, um, I want us to ask ourselves a question. And that question is, what is the messaging that I'm sending? And what I mean by this is that as you and I live in this world, we are always delivering a message. We are always preaching a message. When we interact with people, um, the way we behave in our jobs, the things that we do in our personal lives as we interact with our family members, um, wherever we are, Whenever we are, we are always preaching a message. And the question that you and I must reflect on, and I think this is a good time for us to reflect on, is, is my messaging Christ? Is what people read about me, is what people see about me, is what people know about me Christ? Um, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to be reading from verse 14 to 16 in the Holman Christian Standard Bible version. It says this, it says, but thanks be to God who always puts us on display in Christ and through us spreads the aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For to God, we are the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To some, we are an aroma of death leading to death, but to others, an aroma of life leading to life. And who is competent for this? Okay, so a little bit of background. This was the Apostle Paul writing again his second letter to the Corinthian church. And um, in this letter, of course, he's talking about his ministry. And um, here he's, he's giving thanks to God for the fact that um, through him christ is being on display and honestly through every believer and follower of jesus christ god's purpose for our lives is that jesus would be put on display and that we would be the tools and the vessels by which the knowledge of jesus christ is spread in every place um in fact i love how um the bible uses this term the aroma the smell um, in the King James version in the new King James, it says um, in verse 15, for we are to God, the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing earlier in verse 14, it says through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. You know, what's so beautiful about a scent and an aroma is that when someone comes into a room, maybe they have on a particular perfume. Um, usually when you enter that room, when you see that person, you also smell the scent of their perfume. And let's say the person was to come into that room and then leave that room, the aroma of that perfume lingers. And honestly, our lives should be such that the Jesus that we serve lingers when we come into contact with people everywhere we go. And what does that mean? It means that the fruit of the Holy Spirit should be seen in us in such a way that whenever we interact with people, what they are left with or what lingers from their interaction with us is Christ. Our actions, our words, our behaviors, all that we are is speaking Jesus Christ. Now, the only way that this can happen in our lives is if you and I, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, make every effort day by day 
to surrender to Christ and to surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit that he might continue his work in us. In order for people to see Jesus in us, we need to be consistent in making sure we are going to Jesus. We need to make sure that we are surrendering to Christ. Um, and what does that look like in a practical sense? First and foremost, we need to fight and make time for Christ in prayer, in worship, and definitely in the word of God, in the reading of the word of God, in the study of the word of God, and in the meditating of the word of God. And when we do that, the second thing that we need to do is be obedient to God. When we read the word of God and we read something in God's word that challenges us. We read about how we should respond to situations, things like we should forgive others, things like we should be given, things that like we should love our enemies. All these things, we are required to be obedient to it because when we obey, then we are spreading the knowledge of Christ. When we obey, the fragrance that we give up is Christ Jesus. And guess what? It lingers. And sometimes it lingers for generations. It lingers in a way that is impactful as we see later on in the verse of scripture. In verse 16, it says that the aroma of Christ in our life does two things. What it does is to some people, it is an aroma of death. And what does that mean? It means that our aroma is convicting people of their sin. Our aroma, when we stand for Christ, will be offensive because as we saw in John chapter 3, it talks about when Jesus came into the world, that his light exposed the darkness that was in men, and men did not like that. Um, the Bible tells us in John chapter 16 that one of the works of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of their sin. And God does that through us. And oftentimes it's not because of the words that we say, but it's because of the life that we live. So this means that wherever we go, when we are being the fragrance of Christ, when we are actively leaving an aroma of Christ, it means that that aroma is going to shine a light in the darkness that is around us. Number two, the second thing that our aroma can be when we are the fragrance of God spreading the knowledge of Christ is that it is an aroma of life for those leading to life. So when we live for Jesus, our life leads to more life. It means that we become an encouragement. It means that we can be really a community or part of a community that brings about healing, a place for people to receive and experience God's goodness, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy. So I want to encourage us on this morning. And for those of us who are thinking about <clears throat> or have already thought about what are our goals for this year? And for those of us who maybe are not into that kind of thing, all in all, we all need to sit and reflect and ask ourselves this question. What is my fragrance? Is my fragrance Christ? And is the aroma that I am leaving, is it spreading the knowledge of Jesus Christ every place that I go? Because one thing that is consistent year after year, season after season, moment after moment, is that you and I are called to be a light in this dark world. You and I are called to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. So in terms of life goals, in terms of life purposes, that is it right there. So I wanna encourage us to make the time this year more than ever before. I'm challenging myself to go even further in putting God first, in surrendering to him, in availing myself to him, in obeying him, so that indeed the fragrance and the aroma that I live, leave wherever I go is Christ Jesus. God bless you.